So I uh, got here tonight uh, officially. We were keeping an eye on uh, the incoming president, uh, President-elect Joe Biden, incoming uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris today as they had an event uh, that were honoring uh, people who uh, were killed because of COVID right now. It was a real stark reminder of the challenges that lay ahead of them as they prepare to take their oath tomorrow. Don't tell me things can't change. They can and they do. That's America. On the eve of an inauguration ceremony unlike any before it, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris spent the evening honoring victims of the coronavirus. Between sundown and dusk, let us shine the lights in the darkness along the sacred pool of reflection. Remember all whom we lost. The event and the security around it both underscore the challenges that await the new administration on day one. A divided nation with more than 400,000 lives lost to COVID and counting. To heal, we must remember. It's hard sometimes to remember. We, the American people, are united in spirit. In the shadows of the Lincoln Memorial, Vice President-elect Harris said she hopes the nation emerges from COVID with new wisdom and unity. For many months, we have grieved by ourselves. Tonight, we grieve and begin healing together. Amazing. Keeping with tradition, President-elect Biden will spend Tuesday night at the historic Blair House, just across Pennsylvania Avenue from the White House. Wednesday morning, Biden will attend a church service before heading to the Capitol to take the oath of office. Breaking with tradition, President Trump will not welcome Biden or Harris to the White House before the inauguration ceremony, nor will they ride to the Capitol together. I stand before you truly proud of what we have achieved together. We did what we came here to do and so much more. Instead, President Trump plans to leave Washington before the inauguration. He'll hold his own departure ceremony at Joint Base Andrews. And after a speech and a 21 cannon salute, he'll fly on Air Force One one last time to his home in Mar-a-Lago, Florida. So obviously the big elephant in the room here is going to be COVID and it's going to be security situation and they're trying as much as they can, Joe, to uh, do everything as they typically do. But there are some traditions that they're not going to be doing. One, we know Joe Biden is going to be going to church tomorrow, but not at St. John's right across the street from the White House. He'll be going uh, to St. Ma uh, Matthew's there, the uh, cathedral in town here. Well, the United and it sounds like Biden at church tomorrow is going to get a head start on this. He's asked Mitch McConnell to attend with him. So it's interesting, uh, when, we so it's interesting uh, when we heard that because there are a lot of Democrats that think Joe Biden is frankly foolish. He, he, he has been talking about how he can unite uh, the country and both parties, and he says that he can find common ground with Mitch McConnell. Um, there are some, certainly some Democrats and some Republicans that say this isn't the 90s anymore when Joe Biden was in the Senate and a lot of glad, ha you, know, uh, you know, people just coming back and forth to different parts of the aisle. Um, a different time now. So uh, the fact that this may be an overture already just uh, at the offset is certainly interesting. Um, they are going to need to work together, right. you know, to get it's a, it's a real 50 50 right. Senate. So Democrats have a majority, but they're going to need bipartisan support to get anything done.